بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الحمد لله الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ونبيك وحبيبك وصفيك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأطيب وأطهر ما صليت على أحد من العالمين وصل على أخيه ووصيه علي أمير المؤمنين وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم الحجة المهدي أرواحنا فداه وعجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والذابين بين يديه بإذن الله أطلعنا صلى على محمد وآل محمد My beloved brothers and sisters for last 10 days you all attended this school, the school of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and you learned a lot about Imam Hussein's revolution and Imam Hussein's principles for which he sacrificed his own life. And you listened yesterday to the saga of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the story of his martyrdom in the land of Karbala in the year 685. And we all learned that Imam Hussein alayhi salam was martyred in the day of Ashura, like yesterday. But in fact, the revolution did not stop there in Karbala. The revolution of Imam Hussein alayhi salam continued till after Karbala, beyond Karbala. When Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam led the caravan of his family, the captives, the family of the Prophet, 83 women and children, along with Imam Zain al Abidin, were all taken as captives by Yazid from Karbala to Syria. And they were being paraded in every single city and village and town that they passed through with a celebratory tone by the regime that was celebrating the death of Imam Hussein and marking his death as a victory for the Caliph Yazid. Portraying Imam Hussein alayhi salam as a rebel, a rebel who rebelled against the legitimate caliph. Many people were brainwashed. They were affected and impacted by the Umayyah propaganda. Many people across the Muslim nation, they thought that yes, it is Hussein who is the aggressor and it is Yazid who is the victim. They believe that many Muslims, naive Muslims at the time, believe that it is Hussein who rebelled against the legitimate leader and caliph of the time. In fact, we can see the residues of this brainwashing up till today. Do you know that many Muslims yesterday celebrated the day of Ashura? as a Eid, as a festival? Do you know many of them observed fasting, expressing gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Do you know many Muslims think up till now that the day of Ashura is a day of Eid and celebration and joy? Many Muslims, this is the influence of Bani Umayyah that still exists in the Ummah. And many, many of those Muslims do not even know why they are celebrating the day of the Ashura. They just do it habitually. Because Bani Umayyah have instilled this tradition of celebrating the day of Ashura in the Islamic heritage. And many Muslims do not even bother to ask why I'm fasting today. What is the significance of me fasting today? They are being told it is because of the Israelis across the, uh, the, the sea in Egypt. Okay, so what? Even if the Israelis across the, Egypt, uh, the sea in Egypt, what does this have to do with me? Why I have to celebrate that? Let the Israelis celebrate that. Am I Israeli to celebrate what the Israelis did 3,000 years ago? But you see, many Muslims do not even use their brain. They do not question the authenticity of many of those hadith that have been narrated and put in the Muslim books, made up, fabricated by the factory of Bani Umayyah, and somehow leaked to our books. And today many Muslims take those hadith so seriously. And they take them dear to their heart and they act upon them and they send cards happy ashura to each other and they express happiness and joy in the day of ashura this is the influence of bani umayyah my dear brothers and sisters that they wanted to counter the sadness and sorrow of Ahlul Bayt in this day. They knew that the Prophet himself will be so saddened and sorrowful in this day. They wanted to counter his sadness by fooling Muslims, deceiving them to celebrate this day as a joyous day. Al Imam Zain al Abidzin's mission was to basically educate Muslims to dispel those misconceptions, to unveil the truth behind Ashura. When he came to Syria, when the caravan of captives arrived in Syria, they were all taken to the court of Yazid. Yazid has his court filled with ordinary citizens who came to celebrate his triumph against Ahlul Bayt. Now Yazid doesn't tell them, he doesn't tell Syrians that Hussein is a member of Ahlul Bayt. He doesn't tell them. Rather he tells them that Hussein is a Kharijite. He is someone who does not even belong to Islam, who rebelled against Islam. He cast such a bad image about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. A man who was power thirsty and he was seeking power and he wasn't able to fulfill his goal and he was killed before reaching his goal. And that is to seize power from Yazid. That's how Yazid would depict Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And obviously Syrians were happy to see this man getting killed. And they were celebrating his death. That's how brainwashed they were. And Imam Zain al Abidin entered the court of Yazid. Thousands of people were sitting, not, be, not being intimidated at all. In such hostile environment, the Imam never felt intimidated. In fact, he thought it is his duty to educate those people, those ignorant people who do not know much about the tragedy of Karbala. They do not know the truth about Karbala and his father. So he thought he would turn this occasion against Yazid himself. 
Yazid wanted to celebrate the moment by bringing the family of the Prophet, by parading them in Syria, by depicting himself as the triumphant, and by depicting Imam Hussein as a rogue rib rebel who rebelled against the legitimate government. So, Al Imam Zain al Abidin turns to Yazid and he asks him for permission to speak. And Yazid refuses. Adamantly, he refuses to allow Al Imam Zain al Abidin to speak. And the Imam insists and he refuses. But then when he refused, the Imam let the people pressure Yazid. Because people were stunned to, to see Yazid refusing to allow Imam Zain al Abidin to speak. Why are you so intimidated by this young guy? He wants to speak. Let him speak. What's the big deal about him speaking? Even if you don't like him and you don't like his speech, let him speak. So people started pressuring Yazid to allow this young man whom they did not even know to speak. He says, no, 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 I'm not going to allow him to speak. They told him, وَمَا قَدْرُ مَا يُحْسِنْ هَذَا الْغُلَامِ What can he do to you? Why are you so afraid of him? Let him speak. He says, no, you don't know him. I know him. إِنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتٍ زُقُّ الْعِلْمَ زَقَّ He comes of, he hails from, the, from a family filled with knowledge and education. إِنَّهُ إِنْ صَعِدَ لَا يَنْزِلْ إِلَّا بِفَضِيحَتِي وَفَضِيحَةِ آلْ أَبِي سُفْيَانِ If he goes to the podium, he will come down by exposing me and my schemes to the community. He would tell his advisors. But people ultimately prevailed. They insisted that this young man should speak. And the Imam goes to the podium. And he speaks, he speaks for a few minutes only. أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ مَنْ عَرَفَنِي فَقَدْ عَرَفَنِي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْنِي عَرَّفْتُهُ بِحَسَبِي وَنَسَبِي For those who know me, that's fine. But for those who do not know me, I tell you who I am. أنا ابن مكة ومنا أنا ابن زمزم والصفا أنا ابن خير من انتعل واحتذى he started explaining his lineage and his relationship with who? With the founder of Islam, with the Prophet Muhammad. I'm the son of Muhammad, a guy, a messenger you all adore and respect. I am his son. And then he spoke about his father, Imam Hussein, the martyr. That the guy, Yazid, your leader killed in Karbala is the son of the messenger of Islam, the son of the man who guided you, who brought you from Valala, from going astray to Islam, the guy who saved you and saved your faith. People started rumbling. Is that true? Hussein, we are being told, being told a rebel. He is the son of the prophet, our prophet. They started questioning Yazid and making noise. And, re and uh, Yazid realized that if he allows this man, Zain al Abidin, to go on for a few more minutes, he will be history. And people will revolt against Yazid and they will overthrow him. So, what did he do? He asked the Muazzin, the man who raises the Adhan, to cut the man. To the Imam off by raising the Adhan, even though it wasn't time for Salah. The Muazzin interrupts the, um, the Imam السلام, while the Imam was giving his khutbah. The Muazzin interrupts the Imam by raising the Adhan. He started saying Allahu Akbar. When he said Allahu Akbar, the Imam commented, La shay'a akbar min Allah. There is nothing greater than Allah. The Muaddin says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. The Imam says, Shahida biha qalbi wa ruhi wa dami wa lahmi wa asabi 
وكل شيء في everything in me every cell in my body testifies that there is no god beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Imam alayhi salam dealt Yazid the knocking punch when the Mu'adhan says Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallu alayhi bi'a'la aswatikum The Imam alayhi salam turns to Yazid he says Yazid this Muhammad that you testify for him to be the messenger of Allah is he your grandfather or he is my grandfather? If you claim he is your a grandfather, then you're such a liar. And if you admit that he is my grandfather, why did you kill my father then? You testify for the messenger of Allah to be the messenger of Allah and you kill his son? Isn't this a big hypocrisy? You testify for Muhammad to be the messenger of Allah and you kill his son and you take his family as war captives? Isn't this a big hypocrisy? People wept and cried and the Imam alayhi salam came down. The Imam was the triumphant. Yes, Yazid won the battle, but he did not win the war against Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein won the heart of people. The death of Imam Hussein, the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, ultimately helped people to wake up and to realize how corrupt this regime is that speaks in the name of Allah and in the name of the Messenger of Allah. Something that ultimately brought the demise of Yazid a few years later. Yes, Imam Hussein alayhi salam knew that he will be killed in the land of Karbala. But also he knew that was the only way for him to ensure the survival of this religion. If he does not sacrifice his own soul and his precious blood, Islam will not survive. And he was willing. He did. He gave this very heavy price his life and the life of his children, brothers, nephews, and 72 companions. And he added that with another price by taking by his family, his sisters and his daughters, taken as war captives from Karbala to Kufa and from Kufa to Syria being paraded in every single village and town and city. That was a very heavy price. You think Imam Hussein was not in pain to see his sister Zainab being paraded? He was not in pain to, his, to see his daughters being paraded and being whipped by the enemy every day, day in and day out. You think the Imam was not in pain? Of course he was in much pain, but he realized that this is the only price for him to save this faith, to save the faith of his grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That is the only way for him to expose Yazid and bring him to his end. And ultimately, the Imam was the triumphant. Assalamu ala al Hussein, wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein, wa ala awlad al Hussein. وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ولشفاء مرضانا وقضاء حوائجنا نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر